Remember that? Again, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean you, they could find this. <laughs> I don't remember anything. She could find this information out. You can't. This is 2020, Damien. You can't just lie like that. Everything can be Googled in an instant. She could probably Google <laughs> his name and like amnesia, and the article should come up if he was in a if he was in a car accident. It would have been published published somewhere in the news, perhaps. Well, us three being the host of the most downloaded podcast in the world, I, and I don't think that's provable. Yep. I don't think it, there's any way no, people could find that out. I no, wouldn't have no to way. disagree with you, Tom. Uh, no, but I'm just <laughs> okay. joking. Um, the, I do I do wonder, like, if there's a part of the girlfriend, because if movies have taught me anything, I would love if, like, she went on the date with him and then she's just trying to bash him over the head, like, but make it seem like an accident to rejog his memory, because that's always the movie thing of oh, being yeah. like, that's how they get their memory back. <laughs> they it. smash their head again and everything yeah. <laughs> comes flooding back. Damien, I've just got an idea for this guy. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Perfect yeah. idea. All right, you've got amnesia. Well, you're pretending you've got amnesia amnesia you go on the date with her you mm. drop a fork or something and you go to pick it up you bang your head on the table <laughs> and it all yeah. comes flooding back <laughs> as, as he puts his head he... back up marie yeah <laughs> he remembers her did he say that he he has taken the, said the amnesia lie because he wants to pursue her that is that his purpose What's no his it was it was purely just he panicked and i think this person had such an emotional impact on him he just didn't yeah. know how to respond so he just acted like he didn't know who she was to get out of it Couldn't, and he didn't yeah. expect yeah, to be right. you know essentially asked out by her at the end i feel like that should say it all she had yeah. that big of an effect on you six years ago and six years now and still has that big of an effect on you that you you made up a bullshit lie about amnesia like that's a, <laughs> that's a ballsy fucking lie to make up i feel like that should be less than enough for you to go you know what i don't need her in my life i don't need somebody in my yeah. life that can control me that badly um yeah. like she might have changed look to be fair to her she might have changed as a person the fact that she wants to go back on dinner again she might have changed and realized i fucked up back then i want to go and and rekindle this but that being said it's how you react to her and i feel like if you react to her this way like she she eats you up what goes to say that she doesn't control you again like that like i don't yeah, feel like i mean you should. if he's deep down doesn't want it and that was a panicked reaction i don't think he should go ahead with the date because it sounds like he he was over her he doesn't want to sort of be under her again mm. so i would say leave it don't go on the date and just say i forgot i have a traumatic brain injury sorry i forgot that the <laughs> date was on who are you again <laughs> just say he forgets everything <laughs> yes i want to ask you Tom, I mean, I guess we can finish with this. Do you remember yeah. how the vow finishes? How Channing Tatum helps her get her memory back? Like, what happens? Does he like pull Ooh. down his pants and she's like, "Damn, now I remember <laughs> you." Now, <laughs> yeah, he d- he does the dance to Pony. He strip dances to Pony. Like now, ever since um, Magic Mike, that's how they end every Channing Tatum movie. They get him shirtless <laughs> and do a strip dance. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't actually remember how it ends, but I, they do end up together. I don't know whether she has another traumatic brain injury and then it knocks some sense into her, or if it's something okay. that like gradually comes back to her. Okay, so it's not like they have a moment where they like become romantically intimate. She masturbates the Tatum and then <laughs> it jobs her memory or something <laughs> like that. No, no. Look, I, I actually agree with you guys. I think the right thing is just to come clean, and then yeah. maybe you guys can catch up. I mean, not that anything's going to come from that, but at least you're being honest. And uh, yeah, that's a really really weird lie to make up and keep going. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to really, I wouldn't want to have to live with that lie specifically. There, there, there's no lie worthy of keep spinning. Like there, it's just, it's too hard. That's too hard. Yeah. All right. Well, let's leave it there then for two towers. And I'm going to go next with this one. And it's also going to have a two in it. And it's called D2, the mighty ducks. The sequel oh, to the mighty classic. ducks. Classic. That is now, this is one. obviously, this is the big one. This is where the knuckle puck comes into it. This is where team USA comes into it. To it, Team Iceland. There's everything about this movie is top notch. There's even a handshake at the end. It's 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 perfect. It's the <laughs> oh, perfect way. There is, Let's go there shake is. their hands. And, and in a in a COVID world, there's nothing sexier than seeing a handshake on TV on in a film now. It's like, oh my god, yeah. you can't even that's get hot. that in real life anymore. You got to live for it. The only that's, thing that's that I hot. don't like about this movie is that. Um, the ice skating shop owner, whose name was Hans, was replaced yep. with someone named, I think it's his cousin, and his name's like Jan or something instead. And as a child, I always thought it was the same person because it's just like this this Scandinavian guy working in an ice, ice skating shop. But no, they mm-hmm. swapped him out with his cousin instead. And when I watched it recently, that sort of broke my heart. There you have it. Uh, childhood Tom is a racist after saying all Scandinavian <laughs> people look the same. You heard it here first on the Questionnaires <laughs> podcast. You cancelled Tom. Yeah, 
cancelled. Every, every actor that is Scandinavian in Hollywood is a scars guard. <laughs> I don't believe that there are any other Scandinavians out there. There is. Um, That's funny. Tom's question is: I ran into my ex-boyfriend who has amnesia. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Too good. No, uh, boyfriend said my ex is funner to talk to. So I'm a little shyer and more of a listener. My boyfriend is more of the opposite. He's a lot more confident than me and just a people person. Since we started dating, I've been trying to be more vocal and expressive. Well, it's been five months. We've had a t- we've had tiny arguments that we often talk about, but tonight stung. We had a small argument because I wasn't fast enough texting back. I was at work and then he called me to talk. I explained to him I'm not allowed to have my phone out and I guess he was having a tough night because he lost it. In the end, he said he didn't care if I talked to him or not because he had a nicer time talking to his co-workers and ex than me when she and she was far more interesting he's been friends with her ever since we were dating and it's a trigger for me i'm fine with them being friends but that hurt i honestly want to break up with him because i'm obviously not satisfying him D2. Kick Ooh. him in the balls. No, joke. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 Damien. That's a silly response. Pretend you've got amnesia. That's... <laughs> yes, oh of God. course. Yeah, that's just like, like, yeah. She walks up to him. I forget. What happens when a guy gets kicked in the balls again and then kicks him in the balls? <laughs> oh, now Dude, I combine remember. The two. Combine the I got two. my memory back now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this person, like, I will say that the, the attitude that this person is sort of displaying, you can tell that they're a passive person in the relationship by saying that um, he must have been having a tough night because he lost it. It's almost like she's forgiving him for getting angry at her for her not texting yeah. back or not replying to him. So she's very, very passive. Um, I think that's the one thing that I found very clear with this question. Um, I mean, that would hurt. Like That is such a low blow from the boyfriend because I think, I mean, in a relationship, you obviously want to be like emotionally and physically uh, mm. satisfied for, and, you know, and, and compatible with your partner. So for them to be like, do you know that thing that we do every day and the reason we know each other and share stories <laughs> and you know yeah. I enjoy doing that with co-workers so people I'm not yes. even you know people who I'm paid to interact with for the most <laughs> yeah. part yeah. I enjoy speaking to them more I will talk about <laughs> spreadsheets with them you know that I'm happy to do that with you. I'm enjoying yeah, that like, I'm not enjoying you I almost think Every- that hurts more than hearing that they enjoy talking to their ex more at least they shared an intimate yeah. relationship at one point <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah so, I like how you like spreadsheets because that's like it's like this guy must be an accountant because he's a dick he likes spreadsheets <laughs> or a businessman I, I never said yeah, that yeah, I never yeah, said on, that Marcus. other, other <laughs> industries use spreadsheets in septic, except accounting no it's okay? only accounting so you like, spreadsheets, it's, it's all known. No, no, no. Everyone else, not, you're not, you don't own XL, Marcus, okay? Just calm down. <laughs> no, but I, I I agree with you. Like the fact that someone says, I'd rather talk to co-workers than you is, that's that's the dagger and the X is the twist of the dagger the, in your back. Yeah. Like it's a, yeah. The problem is that she knows it's her weakness as far as being passive, right? And he's attacking that by making her feel insecure. She knows she's an insecure person and he's making her feel insecure. And I feel like that's a bad move on his behalf, especially because she's thinking that she's done the wrong thing here. But I don't think, I don't think she has. Like she feels bad for being upset. Yeah. And speaking of insecure, Marcus, what's going on with the whole accountant thing, buddy? I just made some spreadsheets and all of a sudden you <laughs> thought I was taking a shot yeah. at, at an accountant. What's going on here? Did I hit a, did look, I hit a soft guys, spot? Look, you hit a soft spot. Everybody attacks accountants for being bored. And all the rest of it, you know, we've got to we've got to stick up for ourselves. All right. Mm-hmm. Do you know how you make accounting sexy? Actually, now I'm thinking about it. This is how you make a an an Excel spreadsheet, a sex Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. At your work, <laughs> you take the Abercrombie and Finch models, right? You bring them into your office, pop yeah, the shirts yeah, off. Yeah. You use their abs as Excel cells, and you just draw yes. the grids between <laughs> the abs, and you fill in the abs. There you go, sexy accounting. <laughs> It's never been. How many, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, how, how many different men do you need to do a full spreadsheet? Because you know, like eight, six, maybe eight abs if you're like completely cut. How many guys laying next to each other to do like a, I don't know, to balance someone's books, Marcus? Instead of it being called Abercrombie, Abercrombie I can't even say it, Abercrombie and Finch, it's Abacus and Finch. That's Abacus oh, and nice. Finch. Oh, very yeah. good. Hey, very good. Hey, boys, we need, with numbers, we, need not cut, with words. We, yeah. we need to cut this out of the podcast. We've hit on a million dollar idea. Sure, we may go bankrupt from employing droves of shirtless men, but we will go down in a blaze of glory. Blaze we of will. glory, we'll abacus of print, sexy doing it. I love it. A bit of ab yeah, counting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ab counting. Ooh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> So, um, so 
what do you reckon about this person here? This poor, poor person, D2. Um, the friends with the ex, I think, keeping her around um, is obviously something that bothers her too. Um, saying that she, he, that she honestly wants to break up with him because I'm not satisfying him. Do you think that that's the case? Do you think that she isn't satisfying him? I, th- I think so. And look, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could bounce back from somebody who, when you have an argument, they're... Like their go-to is to be like, well, I get a, a mental stimulation from other people. You do not, <laughs> yeah. you don't do it for me in that regard. I don't know if there is coming back from that. I think you should talk about it. But mm. I, I would say if you're already thinking about breaking up with him, he's definitely giving you a catalyst to maybe speed that process up. He's making it a little bit easier, I yeah. think. Yeah. He sounds like a dick. He definitely sounds like a kind, the kind of person that you don't want to be in a relationship with because, look, every relationship fights. It's, it's normal to fight. But if he's going to throw in your face, I'd rather talk to coworkers or other people. It yeah. doesn't matter about the ex. It doesn't matter about being friends with the ex and all that. Let's take that out of it. If he's going to throw that in your face, then that's – that's a bad defense mechanism. That's not one you want to be uh, like I a part to, of, like because then you're always fighting, like like you're always going to be questioning yourself. I, I got to say, like I think I know that he's saying this obviously because she's insecure about it, but saying that you know he doesn't need her for you know that stimulation. But if she was to break up with him, I think that she, he would chase after her because there's obviously got to be some reason that he's staying with her. So she's just unsure of herself, and she thinks that she probably needs him more than he thinks that she he needs her. I say cut it off and then you could almost see the true colors after that because he probably doesn't think that she's got it in her to basically break up. That's mm. true. He's bluffing. It, it could backfire and he might just go straight to his ex <laughs> if, they, well, if, if the, they've been keeping the, you know, that going. But you're right, you get your answer either way. Yeah, true. It, it, it's worth it. It's 100% worth it because, yeah, he might go back to the ex and then you realize, not for me. That's it. I, I'd, I'd rather find somebody that finds me entertaining enough like – like it's always nice to have like that little goal to be a bit better. Like, all right, I've got to be a bit more talkative. I've got to be a bit more out there. But if you have a partner that's already like you're trying and he's still shitting on you, then fuck that. Like I wouldn't, I would rather know. I, I agree with Tom there. People in the comments were very much like, you know, he should cut it off with his ex, right? Um, I don't know whether it's that they work together. So like he works with his ex, so it's different. What do you think about that? Is that something that you should just be like, bang, no, you shouldn't do it. Depending on, I mean, there's obviously like a lot of different things you could have shared friendship groups and things like that. So it might be more dif- difficult, but that's what a lot of people are saying in the in the advice of this particular question. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think the whole staying with exes, staying friends with exes after, it's tough because I don't know if they, it depends. They could have been dating a month. They could have been dating a year. They could have been dating five years. True. I mm. don't think the amount of time they dated matters too much because you would kind of think, well, why are they still staying in touch? For, what, what benefit are they getting? And in this, this girl situation, the partner has said what he's getting, like the benefit. And that's kind of feels like emotional cheating in a way. It doesn't feel, yeah, yeah. doesn't feel good to hear that. What do you guys right. think? Do you think he, sh- he should be cutting that, that relationship off? I don't think, I don't, I don't like the, well, I've never been friends with any of my exes or anything like that because there's just too much like emotional baggage and all the rest of it. Look, everybody, some people can be friends with their exes and it's, it's perfectly fine. Maybe they're friends. Like maybe they just broke it off because they want to be friends and that's that. Yeah, but I feel I feel like it's a case of you can't tell him to break uh, like stop seeing uh, an ex or anything like that. Mm. Simply like you can say it makes me feel uncomfortable, and it could be up to him at the end of the day. But if you yeah. don't feel comfortable with it, then and he you tell him he's like, I don't feel comfortable with it. If you can you please stop it? And if he says no, then I think that's that's good enough reason for you to go. You know what? Not for me. I think that's a good point. I think if if you're not comfortable with it and you can't deal with it. Maybe it's something that you should at least word it out, word it out to him. It could be nothing there. I mean, this is obviously a different situation because he's actually bringing that up and saying that he's enjoying it. But then in that case, I don't think you shouldn't just be like, get rid of the ex and then you've get, gotten rid of the problem because the problem is him in this situation He's and how he's treating D2. So you get rid of that person and there could be another problem later on. So obviously I think the person that is the problem is the boyfriend and there's no reason why she shouldn't just be like, well, you know what? No, I'm better than this. Mm. Yeah. And what you guys are laid out there, maybe – they're just not compatible in that way. If they're both true. living their lives in a way where it's, it's causing friction and they can't work it out, maybe they need to make like the United States and Iceland in Mighty Ducks, shake hands and walk <laughs> away from it. That's it. Yeah. 
It's true. I think I think there's no there's no better no better um, way to sum this up than watch the final scene of D two the Mighty Ducks, um, <laughs> and then just just tell me maybe maybe she should come out after the second period and be dressed up in the Mighty Ducks attire, which is how that movie ends, which is the most amazing thing. They hit out onto the ice for uh, the first half of the game wearing Team USA. They're not gelling well, so what do they do? They go out with uh, the Ducks uniform, and that's what gets them over the line. It's just a beautiful movie. Yep, and the message is patriotism gets you nowhere.